Greetings and welcome to Timberborn. I'm Catherine of Sky, and first of all, a huge thank you to the developers for giving me a code to play this game today. Uh, and also a massive thank you to all of my patrons and supporters and members of the channel. Y'all are amazing and great. Uh, and I really appreciate your patience. I've been really sick for the past two months, um, and I'm still kind of yeah still sick but i wanted to get this video out to you and hopefully a, a whole series on this game because it really is very very fun um and while we're talking about fun if you decide to buy this game i would be very uh grateful if you bought it if you chose to buy it on the epic store just use my uh creator code and i get a tiny uh, per, uh percentage of the sale price and it's it doesn't cost anything to you all right so let's see we want to start a brand new game now this is quite different from the demo we now have two factions that we can choose from we have the folk tales and we have the iron teeth now they're not just differences in looks of these beavers uh, the folk tales are more like nature oriented and they have different buildings like beehives and other kinds of things underground storage and the iron teeth use a lot of metal in their structures and uh, they also have just just different kinds of things that we're going to find out about soon but these guys you need to uh, unlock level eight of happiness with the folk tales so look we're going to start there uh, just in case you're at the beginning of the game and you just want to follow along we're going to choose the folk tales uh, and I have decided to choose the lakes map. I have previewed all the maps and we're going to do lakes today with this. Now they do have many game settings. Uh, we're going to go with normal, but as you can see with easy, this is a more relaxed experience. They beavers consume less food and water. Droughts are rare and short, hard, um, humans did not make it and neither will you. Your settlement starts with scarce resources. Droughts are severe and become worse over time. Um, and then there's a custom, of course, you can choose the number of beavers and all of the, the difficulty settings here. But I prefer to choose a normal game because it does have a little bit more difficulty to it than easy mode. And uh, the droughts are milder at the beginning, but intensify over time and boy, do they. So let's go ahead and just start the game. And we will, we wanna get our beavers to a place of happiness. And that's what we're gonna work for as we get the folk tales up and hopefully to unlock the iron, uh, the iron tails, which uh, we'll choose a different map for those and maybe have a second series of those little guys. But for now, I do want to play with the folk tales, uh, like just the very beginning of the game. Like you will get the game if you decide to get this thing. Uh, it is in early access, so keep uh, keep be aware of that. That this is not a finished game. It has a lot of content though, and I'm really happy. It's grown a lot since we saw the demo phase. Uh, but let's get right into this. So this map has these kind of like large bodies of water connected by rivers. Now, if we look at the water, you can see some of it flows quite quickly and other parts of it are very still. That is very, very uh, important to keep in mind. Like here, this might be a really great place for a water wheel because the water flows, but up here, it's almost still. So we need to keep that in mind when we are thinking about power and how we're going to organize our settlement. Now I am going to kind of pause especially in the beginning it's very important to pause uh, to make sure that you're using your time effectively because right now we have no food and we really have no uh, well we have no logs but we're beavers aren't we cute we're kind of great oh they're so tiny and cute this is a baby beaver too see so can he stand up hello 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 kind of bit shorter you can see he's shorter than the other one oh and these two in the front oh they're so cute anyway uh cuteness aside we need to set them up getting to work so we do have obviously adults and children in this area we don't have the ability to build a bridge or a dam yet uh so what we need to focus on is we need to have these trees we have these bushes which are going to be our initial food we have these trees we also have these trees now getting up these cliffs, we do have one stairway here, but the rest of it is kind of, well, it is impassable until we get stairs, uh, which are in the paths and structures tab. We have wooden stairs, but they cost us research points and planks, which we don't have that tech yet. It is refined wood, which we need to get to. Okay, so let's start out by doing a couple of things here. 
I want to add, I want to add a pathway. So normal buildings are at least two squares wide. So I want to add a road here like this at the very least. And then maybe here to go and that will go right behind our structure there. So we also want to have a uh, connection to the door here. And how big is this? One, two, three. Oh, a three by three area is actually going to be quite important to us. So we're going to leave that as it is. Uh, and so we have all of this connected so far. Uh, now we want to go and look at wood and we want to build a lumberjack flag. And I'm thinking somewhere we want to get this area lumberjackized as in cutting trees. We'll put this here and have a very particular reason for doing it exactly there. Now this, you can see the area that it affects. We want to get these trees, but maybe not too many of those trees. As in, we want to get as much of the right hand side as possible with these lumberjack flags. So let's see, can we put it er, like there? Yar, maybe, maybe. Can go one over, put that there. That I think is good. Let's put two up there. Now this is probably gonna drive some people a tiny bit nuts, but it works. So normally we would have a straight path here, um, but we have trees in the way. So as they're gonna cut those trees down, we will make that, oh good Lord, we'll make it a straight path. But for now we can go squiggly wiggly and that's just fine. It doesn't affect anything else. Now here the path was on the road there. Now this is a good, yeah, I think this is going to work for us. One, two, three, four. Perfect, perfect. Nice dimensions. A lot of the buildings, why, why I'm counting is there are buildings that are two by two. There are buildings that are two by three or uh, three, uh, three wide and two deep. And yeah, those, those, that's the majority of the buildings. Uh, two by three and uh, two by two or three by two and two by two. Anyway, uh, so that's set up. We now have three lumber flags amongst these trees. Now these guys are gonna be a little bit different. Now, where do we wanna put the road here? I'm thinking here might be good. We wanna use as much of this green area as possible for crops and for growing trees and stuff. So I'm thinking, let's just do this. Is that good? No, I don't think that's good actually. I think we wanna do this. Let's do that and continue this road this way. I think that will work. Uh, and then we might have another road here. We'll see. Now we do need access to the water for various reasons. So I'm thinking about kind of going away, like making a path this away. Um, however, there are bushes in the way and I'm not gonna chop any of those down before we get some farming going on because our beavers will starve. So we're going to just leave that as it is, but we are kind of planning with stuff here. So here, let's make another lumberjack flag. And this time I think I wanna put it near here. So we're gonna take a road this way in hopes of building a bridge across here or possibly a dam if we have enough wherewithal to do that. So let's find ourselves another lumberjack flag. And the reason I'm putting it so close here is uh, because we want to be able to have this flag also reach this area when we finally get uh, the ability to cross over via bridge or even pathing. We are gonna need something. We're gonna need stairs or something there. So right now we have one, two, three, four lumberjack flags. This is a pretty good start. We need to add a log pile or two. So let's add a log pile over here. And then we'll add one also over here. That seems to be okay. Yes. Let's do this and let's change. Now nah, that's fine. The road can go that way. It doesn't matter. Um, there are also things we can put here like decorations to make our little beavers happier. Now, uh, the other thing we need to do here is we're going to continue this little road. Let's get our road and I'm completely blanking. Oh, there it was. Jeez. Okay. Nobody saw it. It's fine. And we're going to make a food structure here. And that food structure is going to be a gathering flag for berries. So they're going to be able to gather these berries. 
And there's a reason I'm kind of designing this the way it is, and we will get into that in a bit. So they're going to build these various gathering flags and stuff. Um, these guys don't need any lumber. They don't need any materials. They can just go go at them at the get-go and so that they can start actually uh, getting stuff. Now, keep in mind that they have to be connected via roads or else they won't get built. It's really important. Okay, so let's see. We have nothing to do in the range. Well, guess what? I forgot to... Uh, <clears throat> somebody forgot to mark cutting ranges. Cut trees is the very first, well, second icon from the left. And we need to mark a cutting area of all the trees. Now, one of the things I love about this game... Look at this. Is this not great or what? It only... See, I can move my mouse cursor way out here. And it only goes to the area that is on the same level. So it's not going to cut down these bushes. It's fabulous. Okay, uh, and here I want to also do that here. So they're all in range. I want to do the same down here as well. And then do a similar activity right over here. So we'll just take all of this uh, into mind there. And I believe with the food, we don't need to mark that at all. Uh, the next we have is planting of crops and then we can plant bushes, but we need to have certain technology before we can do this. So let's go ahead and build these different kinds of things. We do have the two lumber yards. So now our beavers are going to be uh, cutting down trees. We're going to be gathering wood in the pile. And then this gatherer flag is going to enable us to get some of these berries. Now let's go ahead and build a storage house here or a storage uh, warehouse, small warehouse. That's what it's called. It's a warehouse, hooray. And the other thing that we need absolutely emergently is water. We definitely need water for our people. And so let's go ahead and start over here. Let's just start a water gathering area here. In the beginning, we'll only need one pump. That's just fine. So we have some really nice tools for making things uh, of higher priority or not. We can do that right on the structure here by using these arrows and those are just highest priority and red is lowest. Now, one thing that I would give feedback on to the developers, I wish there was a pause button because there have been times that I planned out a bunch of stuff and I don't want to delete it, but I don't want them to build it. And sometimes I've had my colony be, I don't know, so affluent with resources of labor that they build it anyway and it's like oh no no I didn't want to waste the uh the lumber on that or whatever it was so anyway that's the thing that I wish we had was an absolute pause button now then um we need to start storing water as well and I highly recommend you do these in groups of three uh, uh water tanks these small water tanks in groups of three and the reason for that is because once we get large water tanks, one large water tank will fit exactly in this square of three. So let's go ahead and do this one as a higher priority. Another way to do this is look at the priorities uh, little tab here and you can adjust them. And let's see, how do we want to do this? Let's do, hmm, I guess we can do this as high. Uh, yeah, and you just click on it or you can just select an area. It all works. It's really, really nice. One suggestion I would uh, make is Exodus Borealis and some other games as well have a really nice feature where when you choose a thing, there's a menu on the right hand side that gives you the priority. Uh, so you can click it without having to go through the menus again. And it's a super, super handy. I love that feature in those games. All right. This was really fast. Look what they did. They have enabled us to connect the path quickly. So let's just do that. And we can use the deconstructing tool to delete the buildings. And there we go. Yes, delete, delete, hooray. And there's a separate one for deconstructing plants as well. All right, so uh, game is going fast now, which is great. We need this to be up, up, up and running. Very important that we get our water pump going or our beavers are going to be extremely unhappy with us. We still need four logs and construction to happen before that goes. We right now, um, in the central uh, building here, this is where we manage our builders. Those are our workers. So we have two people or two beavers there working and they are going to be building 
uh, everything. They take materials to the construction site and then they work on the building. You need to make sure and manage your beavers very carefully to make sure there is somebody working at important buildings. I really, really wish we could adjust the priorities for this, um, but I haven't found a way to do so. Um, so anyway, yeah, just if, if you need to fire people from every other job by going here, clicking the minus button or wherever, pausing the lumberjack flags, whatever you need to do to make sure somebody is working in water management there uh, or water collection. Now we do have one of these on high priority and the rest are on medium. I do want them to build one at a time and make sure they get built. So that's gonna be really important to get done. They have started building this small warehouse, but what I think I wanna do first is we need to get some farming, some proper farming. These bushes are not gonna last forever and we absolutely need to get them working. So what I wanna do is we're gonna build a couple of farms here. I'm gonna build two farmhouses. Let's see, this one, that's kind of perfect there. One, two, one, two, one, two, and not one, two. Uh, we can, we can fix it. It'll be fine. So the farmhouse kind of defines where the crops can go. You can see the kind of limit we have here. Um, but importantly, it's just near this area. Now, what we could do though, is do some different buildings like grills uh, along this uh, road. And those are, let's see, one, two, I think. One, two, yes, those are two wide. Uh, we also have grist mills later and bakeries and other stuff, but of course bakeries have to be eaten all kinds of stuff. Anyway, we'll get to all that stuff later, not immediately. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to plan very far ahead, so you don't have to, just, uh, just play. Just play, have fun, enjoy it, because ultimately, um, it's going to work out. It's really going to be fine. You can trust me on that one. All right, let's put the first farmhouse right there. All right, so we have our water, uh, water pump and the water pumping person is going to generate water for the colony. Beavers will come and drink the water. We do need to start getting these tanks set up so that when the first drought comes, we have places to store that water and we need multiple places to store water. Okay, so this one is medium priority, but I think I'm going to make this one high priority. Well, I'll put this one on second priority. That can be regular third priority, which is fine. These guys are not happy with the water situation, so they're going to go first thing to the water pump and go get a drink. Well, they should. Hello. Go get a drink, please. Go, go, go. There you go, little beavers. Nice. Okay, cool. Now, we need to keep track. We can see how many unemployed beavers we have here. And until we make housing, we cannot have any beaver babies working. Well, the babies are not going to work, but <laughs> we can't improve our population size. But we absolutely need to get this farmhouse done. Okay, so here's our first water tank. This is great. This is really great. I want to put that on medium priority. Let's put the farmhouse on high priority. I really like to micromanage this because it's really, really important. Uh, we need to get the farm going because it does take time for them to, uh, to work on the crops, to uh, plant them, to harvest them, all of those things. So let's get some carrots going on here. Now these uh, plants, the crops will not grow on rocky soil so that's pretty important to note so let's see one two three space one two three okay so this is going to be our first area that we're going to need to or want to cultivate there going to leave these berry bushes for now okay also now we have a farmer working in the dell here going to go ahead and make uh one two three there we go gonna make a field about this big uh, I know that's not a very precise amount <laughs> about this big yeah one two three uh, maybe we can move one of these things one two three one two three ah so it doesn't matter it's fine okay and uh, we only have one farmer here that is probably not a problem right now but what we can do though is we can remove one of these lumberjack uh workers or lumber workers 
and instead let them go into this farmhouse so that they can start planting stuff. And the reason for this empty space is going to become clear once we get further technology. And speaking of technology, we really need to get technology going. So I want to get science made. Let's go ahead and build two science huts. This thing is going to go up to medium priority. Uh, all right. And this is full. So that's great. This is kind of great. So let's get this going. This one is going to be a little bit higher priority. And I'll say that this one can be lower priority. So warehouse should get made next. And one of the things that I really wish about the warehouse, they are configurable, uh, but I wish you could configure them when you build them. Because when I build this warehouse here, I very much only want it to store carrots and berries and that's it. But if it, if I'm doing something else, if I'm looking at another part of the map, uh, this can get built and then filled with stuff. There is an empty storage button, but it would be really nice just to be able to set it up. So anyway, let's make this have um, berries and carrots. And what I want to do is we have a capacity of 200 items in here. So I'm going to do something like, I don't know, 150 and 150. That way there will always be 50 for the other type of food in there. So it won't ever be just one. And the beavers, they kind of need every kind of food. Um, they have certain needs here. So hunger right now is being filled by the berries, but nutrition one will be filled once we have carrots for them to eat. Um, but nutrition two, once we get to having baked potatoes or grilled potatoes, that doesn't satisfy nutrition one. Uh, nutrition two is the potatoes and you have to feed them carrots as well. So it's good to keep all the crops growing. Uh, just make sure you have space to plant them and all that kind of stuff. Okay, we got this part of the tutorial. We got all the things done. Hur hooray. All the hoorays are happening. Okay, and we have somebody working on science. Uh, every time they generate a thing of science or finish their work process, it generates three science points, which will appear up here. Now the tech tree in this game is quite simple. You look at the menus, you literally see it right there. Large warehouse is 250 science points and it's in red, we can't afford it. Um, but that's where we're gonna look for stuff. So it's kind of a nice menu system where it's like, oh my God, I wanna build this big suspension bridge. What do I need for it? Oh wow, 1600 science points. It's gonna cost me 50 wood, 50 planks and 40 somethings. What are those? I happen to know that those are metal blocks, um, but that's like way beyond our tech capacity right now. But I really love the way it just like gives you all the information right in the menu screen. You know what's there. You want you want pathing. You want to go places. This is going to show you where you can go. Uh, stairs. We have platforms and all kinds of stuff there. I like that system. It's really, really good. So let's see, we have, we're getting this other thing done. Oh, and we're building another small water tank. That is kind of perfect. That's really great. We definitely want that to happen. And we're going to need to start building some beaver homes uh, because we're kind of running out of, uh, out of stuff here. So what I want to do is let's build some houses. So the standard one is we have a lodge with a door on the left on the right side and a lodge with a door on the left side. Now, if we look at the tech, we can get a double lodge, which is basically a two story beaver house. It is three wide and two uh, deep and you can only access it on the second floor for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe they like to use a twirly slide in the side inside to go to the basement I don't know uh, but yeah that one is there so it's a it's a strange thing I have to say but I guess it works so let's go ahead and place some of these houses down uh, and then there we go that's two and we're going to do something on this side uh, which is to make a space in the middle and we have reasons for this space that will become apparent quite shortly. So let's see, let's make a path here and then we'll make a path there. We'll make a tiny beaver enclave right now. So we have 65 wood and 59 carrots or 59 food. We only have berries, berries right now. We can check out these carrots. They're 43% grown. 
Okay, and so those are working pretty well. All right, cool. Now, as you can see, we're kind of running out of trees. So the way to fix that problem is we need to build a forester's hut. It's going to cost us 60 research points. It's a bit expensive, uh, so we need to kind of get there soonish. There we go. All right, cool deal. Very, very good. We are having houses for beavers. Now, with four houses, I think that will... No, that will be exactly as many as we have of beavers, uh, four beavers, as in we're going to have to build more if we want our population to grow. Now, it might be a good idea uh, to build some houses over in this area because there are beavers working down here. So that's a thing that we will do, I think. We we'll want to build, let's see, maybe here. One, two, let's build a beaver house here. Or maybe even like this. Uh, I'm trying to think of like the vertical possibilities because there's a reason these things have flat roofs. You can actually put stuff on top of them. It's quite handy. Uh, so anything with a flat roof, you can actually put things on top of. Uh, add more beaver homes and all that kind of thing. So we can have this one connecting to the road. And then have one connecting up here and make a tiny little road there. I think that will work. Okay, stair. Oh, whoop. no, no. Whoops. Okay, there we go. So we can have some beavers living down here as well. Keep him a little bit closer to any kind of industry we're going to have in this area. Which right now, all we have is the lumberjack flag. And we're kind of running out of trees here. Might be it's time to start pausing the lumberjack flags. So that beavers can work in other areas. Okay. And one thing that you can see here is how far that our beavers can travel. You can see up here, these are green roads. Uh, and then the connections to the buildings have little circles on them. Uh, but as we get further out, these are already uh, in the yellow so that's quite far for the beavers to travel. Uh, so we might, it might even be a good idea to put another water gathering section up here uh, so that these beavers have a little bit more access to water. But so far, I think they can travel there quite easily and go and get some water uh, because we all know that beavers just love water. So, so here we go. We have three, uh, three water containers almost full. Now, did we get any carrots yet? Nope, 84% on the carrots. So we're going to have to be patient with those right now. Make sure they do what we want them to do. All right, nighttime is a bit dark. I apologize if it's too dark on YouTube, but that's the way it's in, it is in Beaverland. We don't have any uh, little lanterns or anything like that, unfortunately. We'd love to have a bit more lighting. But uh, anyway... We are going to get this crop of carrots in very shortly. Again, really important to set up this process here. So we're going to let our beavers... What are they doing now? Let's see. They're collecting wood. The other project that we need to do is we need to get uh, planks made. And I'm thinking we might just get those planks made out here, as in have a little bit of industry down here. We can even put in a water wheel because it is the current is flowing here. So that is a possibility. So if we had something like um, the water wheel coming in this way, that would probably work. Now this part here is dead still. So the water wheel could not go there. So let's look at our power situation. Uh, so we couldn't put the wheel here because it wouldn't move, but we could put it here, anywhere along here, and we'll get platforms over here so that actually works. Now we can get a path this way, have one kind of coming down this way. And the reason I know we need power, and I might be jumping the gun here a bit, is when we're going to get our lumber mill, uh, it says at the top we need 50 horsepower and it has an electric bolt on it. Uh, so this is actually not electricity. This is mechanical power. Um, so 
this building can be connected pretty much on any side except for uh, the doorway. I believe you can even connect it by that window up front uh, with the gear power. This is mechanical power and not electric. Uh, but we are rated in horsepower. I, it should be actually beaver power because we do have another solution for beavers, which is the power wheel. They can actually generate their own power. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a power wheel here. And this is going to be our source of power because I'm feeling like that drought might come shortly. Uh, and then the river is going to dry up and then we won't have any anything like this. So let's go ahead and put our lumber mill next to it. And this thing right next to the wheel is going to power this structure. As in, we're going to get some, um, some lumber made from here. And any buildings that are connected to it will also get the benefit of that power. Now, if you have too little power for a situation, the machine will run, but it'll run slower. And that's just fine. But we need to have the ability to get power even in the dry season. So I feel like having this power wheel, remember it costs 40 logs. So this is extremely expensive. Um, it's good to have this backup thing that we can use even in the dry season. Now then, we have one unemployed beaver. And here we have some carrots going on. Let's go prioritize planting, I think. I also think we might need to set up another. Oh, wow. We've reached level five of happiness. We have nutrition one and comfort. Uh, that is, of course, having a home, which is kind of great. Really great. Now, the other thing that we can work on is getting a dam. And that is a nice little project that I would love to do. Now, we need to go to the landscaping thing for that. Now, there are different kinds of dams. We have a dam which blocks some water but allows some to pass through a spillway at the top. And that's the thing you want to do if you want to keep the water moving. A levee uh, blocks water completely. Now, levees are kind of like these. These little guys here that are like made out of sticks and stones and block our water from coming in here. There is one holding this water back um, and we can actually delete those. Uh, have our beavers clear them out if we want the water to flow down these other pathways that we have in this uh, in this area. So what I ideally what I'd like to do is have a levee out here, but we might need another builder's hut to get to this area. So let's see, what can we do here? We don't have any stairs yet, so I think we're gonna have to maybe just chill for a bit. Um, yeah, because I don't think we can get there. We don't have any access there yet. All right, but that's okay. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, to extend your building range, you can build what is called a builder's hut. And I think it is, where is it? It is somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is. It's one of those things you don't use very often. It's not under wood, is it? No, we have technologies there. Water. And housing. No, labor. There it is. The builder's hut is right there. Uh, it's going to cost us 100 science points to get to there. So not keen on unlocking that at this very moment. But it might be worth putting in another farming hut for us. But right now we do have a fair amount of carrots, which is great. But the first thing I definitely want to unlock is stairs. Stairs make the world just go round. Well, they make it go stair stepwise, but yeah. Anyway, it's all good. Stairs are great. They're going to enable us to build complex structures and fun stuff. So we're going to get to those in just a second. Once we get our 70 science points, we have 63 right now. Okay, they're doing good. Beavers collecting stuff. See, if you prioritize planting first, this is not an emergency of food right now. We still have 91 carrots. Uh, and what they're gonna do is harvest one and then plant immediately. And when the dry season comes, that's gonna be really important if, if they can get these guys maybe up to the next 100% uh, growth. So hopefully we can get two things from there. Now this poor little beaver is, is doing the walk-in thing. This is like an exercise class for poor beaver uh, because there's nothing to power. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this power wheel for now because we don't actually need it. It's, uh, yeah, not, not needed at this point. 
Now, I want to add another... Oh, I don't want to add anything, actually. We have so few trees. I'm really... Well, there's some over there. There are some over there. But in general, not many. I'm going to go ahead and pause this lumberjack flag because it is just not doing anything. We have 57, 58 logs. Okay, so now we can unpause because we have the building finished. And some of those po uh, logs are going to be processed into planks. So I want to build a small warehouse here. I'm going to go ahead and build it uh, a bit funny. Should I do funny? Should I not do funny? I'm trying to think of how... Oh, no, this is actually good, I think. Yeah, we'll do this this way. It'll be fine. We'll just do that. Okay. All right. And now, hopefully, we're going to get some planks made so we can see how these buildings work. They are looking really good. Now, this one is going to build us some planks. That's exactly why I wanted to build a storage area right here. Uh, so that we can collect the planks, collect any other processed products, and just put them in that hut. Now, we're going to be very cautious with the amount of wood we use for planks. We don't need a whole lot. But what I do want to unlock is stairs. They are super important. Um, so we're going to get stairs here and stairs there. And I know, yes, we are building underwater. But you know what? That is not a problem for a beaver. Because beavers have tails and beavers can swim so beavers are just lovely and this is a game all about the beavers and uh, it's pretty exciting also note that uh, in general one farmer's hut can take care of a lot of cropland so you don't have to build a second hut right away just kind of watch and see how they're doing and how far they progress and stuff like that and uh, yeah you'll find the balance of how many farm huts you need uh, different crops take different amounts of time to grow, so it's really difficult to give a number on exactly how much is needed. Um, let's see, we do have an issue here of a lack of entertainment, I see. So one of the things we want to put down is leisure places. We can put in a campfire. Let's put that in, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Let's put that maybe here. Yeah, let's put that here. And then here, I'm going to get a staircase and probably a road up and connect this way because we want to put our forestry hut in here as well. Okay, here we have stairs. Hooray! Look at this. This is great. And look at them. They can work underwater. They are beavers. Look at them paddling back. Oh, it's so cute. So once this connects, this is going to be enabling us to get all of these trees over here. So we don't have quite a dire... Uh, emergency with the trees uh, it is a bit of a dire emergency so definitely needed to get this stairway completed we have three planks needed uh, or three planks delivered and four needed so there they are bringing the last one and hopefully building it. oh there it goes it is built hooray so now this one let's unpause this because now they can get all these trees which we've already marked for cutting so yeah what do we got over here this um these camps can get these trees there's not a lot of trees left so the very next thing i want to buy here with our science points is a forester and that's going to cost us 60 science points now it's worth noting that the science points are made out of thin air these are just beavers having ideas that are just like wow that's great you know that kind of thing so yeah very important. Now here, I think I want to make a path down this way for a moment. Can I? Nay. Ay, 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 ay. Naughty. All right. Well, I want to delete this tree here because I want to build a dam here. Definitely want to build a dam. Hopefully at the narrowest part, like here. I think that's the narrowest part of this river. And I'm just going to go ahead and plan this dam. No, I'm not going to plan it. I want to make sure that we get a forester. That's so important. So in uh, I, I've played uh, multiple games uh, so far. And so in one of the biggest mistakes that I made early on was not getting the forester soon enough. 
Okay, that ticking sound means the dry season is on its way. So, danger, danger zone. Uh, we also would like to make, let's make a couple more water tanks. And again, this is where I would really love to see the priority when building thing. So I don't have to go here and get these guys, you know, manually. That would be a nice, nice feature. Okay, so we need 60 science points, I think we said. Let me just check again. Yes, 60. We need seven planks for that operation as well. So let's see, let's put a path here as well. Anyway, uh, about the trees. So I had these, this forester's hut and what the forester does is plant trees. Um, but <laughs> it took a long time for them to grow. It takes a long time for trees to grow. So like birch grows in nine days, pine in 12 and maple in 24. And I only planted maple. And that was also a bad decision. So I'm going to show you how I like to plant my forests to kind of mitigate the problem because yeah, not a good time. It was definitely not a good time. All right, we have 45 logs. We have 27 carrots, 68 berries, and lots of busy beavers. Kind of feeling like maybe another farmhouse might be good. Definitely feeling another farmhouse. I'm worried about the crops. They won't get harvested in time, but I, I need to trust the beavers. Trust in the beavers. It'll be fine. This beaver is doing their darn best to make food and stuff and things. Now we have one unemployed beaver, which is great. Uh, that's perfectly good. We could build another lumberjack flag. In fact, what we could do is move this one. Um, do we want to move it? Do we care? I don't know. Probably we don't care, I would think. And then we'll have a dam over here. But now it is time for us to buy the lumberjack hut or the forester's hut. Uh, not a lumberjack. This is the anti-lumberjack. <laughs> okay, let's put this somewhere like... Okay, so what we want to do here is the forester plants berries mm -hmm, and trees. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea that I want to pursue is kind of have a large area for both berries and the trees. Now, if I put it there... We see we reach kind of to this area down there. So I'm thinking like, I don't know, somewhere maybe here. And keep in mind, this forester can also plant trees in, in our uh, local area as well that we can designate for not cutting, which is kind of nice. Okay, so I think probably there. I think there. Okay, there we go. Perfect. And I'm going to get our road tool to make sure that we make a road. Now, I'm going to connect it here. Remember, that was a planned pathway to go this way and down. And that will give the forester access to these berry areas. Now then, uh, how am I going to plant this forest? This is really, really important. Uh, what we need to do is we have three different kinds of trees. Uh, birch grows the fastest, but only provides one log. Pine is a little bit slower, two logs, and maple is very slow, but eight logs. And maple is the most efficient tree per planting, cutting, whatever. But yeah, you heard me before. It is a rough time if you kind of have issues with, um, with your drought coming, which is in 1.1 days. It's rough. And we probably won't even get this forest just hut up in time. But uh, in order for some of the trees to go more quickly and just provide us with some wood rather than no wood, I like to plant them in strips, kind of, and have at least a small area for birch. Maybe this much, I guess. Now, why am I doing it this way? Is that so some of it has access to water. Uh, if we kind of dam it up, um, we'll have a little bit of water for longer now the drought is going to prevent that because we don't have the dam yet but we want to have as much getting watered as possible the same kind of goes with if we have an irrigation tower that we put in later those areas are going to be watered uh all year round now let's go for the pine we'll have another grove of pine and then the rest i want to be maple because maple again as we said is the most efficient tree 
and that'll go here and they do kind of look different so if you want some trees in your neighborhoods for example you can actually put them there you can like put a tree here and that one is not going to get uh, cut down because we don't have a cutting order on it now we did put the road in so that they could access this building and kind of bring the materials out here that's important now i didn't <laughs> Of course I didn't do this. No, we have 15 somethings in here. Oh, but they're planks. Great. All right, so we're going to say allowed none. We're going to say planks. Yes, we want some. We're going to have, let's see, this can hold 200. So let's do 50. We're going to do paper 50. Um, metal blocks we're not going to do right now, nor scrap metal. Just things that we're making right now. Gears, we'll do 50. And then we're going to have books uh fifth four actually we'll do like 40 books 40 gears and then we'll have 20 explosives and that's what's going to be in this warehouse i'm not sure if i'm going to make the explosives over here or not yet but we'll find out anyway it is looking like we might need a second water pump so let's make one of those pronto uh, this might be too little too late, but it will have to do because we don't really have a choice. Now, what I would like to do is actually build a platform underneath here. Uh, can I do that? Do I have enough science points for this? 100 science points. No. Why? Help. So what I'm going to do is do the next best thing is put one here. And that way uh, we'll have room for this one and this one. And we'll just save space that way. But that is going to be the next purchase, definitely. Okay, so there we go. We're going to put this on high, high, high priority. Okay, carrots are being harvested. This is good. Now, I don't want to make any more houses right now. I don't want our population to grow. I really want us to get through this drought. I don't think we're going to have enough to finish this. Uh, these other water basins are not getting filled. That's a bit scary, like more than slightly scary. So that's something to worry about, think about. It does look like our farmland is exceeding the capacity of one farm, so we might need to build another farmland, farmhouse. Uh, we do have 14 planks, so I'm going to pause these for now because we don't need any more. I don't want to waste any more wood on that right now. Campfire has been built, as you could see there. They kind of hang around and chat if they want to. And we're going to be really cautious until we get this forester's hut up. And the forester is going to start making stuff. There we go. Forester at home. Did you see the light come on? That was great. So forester starting to plant trees. This is nice. And drought is begun. Okay, it's 3.7 day drought and it comes from the edge of the map you can see it happen it's a bit scary because it goes green and then it goes very brown so these plants these trees uh drying out and will die within 14 days and then you're kind of out of luck so it's rough and see now our tree land is gone yeah it's parched and the poor poor uh, farmer here doesn't have much to do i guess we can plant berries here let's do that let's give him something to do if he still has a job by tomorrow let's just plant berries there and maybe here maybe these are probably not good here it's hard to tell i'm not sure if all of those are bad they might be yeah i think so this one might be okay. So that's going to be our berries, but yeah, water's going to dry out very shortly. This is, yeah, this is scary times is what this is. <laughs> Drought time. Oh, and there it goes. Boom. So now our farmers have a tiny little chance to save these crops. It's drying out and will die in 2.1 days. So they have to harvest it within 2.1 days or else we're not going to get the benefit of those carrots. Now these beavers will still cut down these trees and it looks like there is a deeper lake out here which may or may not dry out. It depends. There is such a thing as evaporation in the game. Uh, so that's important to note. 
Now the water level here is quite high, but I think we'll see that probably go down by the end of the drought. We'll try to remember to check back uh, when we have that. Now, right now, there's no water to be pumped. We, we have our savings and that is it. That is all we got. So we have to make this last survive uh, for 2.3 days. Well, probably a little bit more because uh, it'll take time for the rivers to uh, flow their waters down all into this area and yeah, make sure things work. Now the forester is not going to be able to plant during this time, which is kind of a shame, but we can do other things, which um, we could work on making this dam. And I think that's probably a good idea. So let's see if we can... I wonder if it's uh, going to be close enough to work on. Let's see if we can go there with this. So that's going to be our regular dam. And let's get a path leading to this dam. Okay, let's make it just a river path here. And we have an issue there. Let's delete that. And I don't know if the builders will make it this far. Let's see. Oh, it's redlining here. <laughs> really redlining. Dang. Okay. Oh, they are starting to work on at least part of it. So with a dam, the water is going to stay in here for longer and we can keep on pumping it out uh, for as long as it stays because there's evaporation and there's also pumping makes it come out as well. Now with explosives, we can also make this part of the river deeper. Uh, very like this area is deeper. <laughs> uh, that's going to help us with our water maintenance and helping with uh, the beavers uh, having enough water because we have 62 water, 63, 62. Now it's, yeah, it's uh, interesting. It's very interesting. Numbers are hard. Numbers be very hard. But speaking of water, it might be prudent of us to build um, some water up here as well. Uh, some water storage, maybe. Uh, so that these beavers also don't have to travel very far for their water. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's just get... What we can do, though, is get platforms, maybe. And platforms are kind of fun because they kind of enable you to build the water uh, thingies offshore. Well, yeah, off the shore, definitely off the shore. Uh, so that you can collect here and have the land for the crops. And that's quite nice. Uh, all right, so let's go there. One, two, one, two. Yeah, that works, works well. Mm, does this work? Probably not. Let's see, we need four actually for each thing. So we'd need this many. Yeah, we need that many to have a pathway as well. So let's just, uh, no, we're not gonna delete that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get a big water vat over there. And the vats, uh, the large water tank is 300 capacity instead of these are 30, <laughs> which is a tiny, tiny amount. That's not enough. Okay, so here we go. These beavers are, they are working at least on the first uh, part of the dam. Man, the dam is going to save us. It's going to do good things for us. But I'm looking at time and it does look like a very bleak landscape. It is time for us to finish up this episode. So thank you so very much for joining me. Come watch, check out the cliffhanger here uh, and see what, well, check out the post cliffhanger action in our next episode. And again, if you would like to support me by buying this game on Epic, please use my creator code. Otherwise, get it anywhere you want. Feel free, have a nice time. I hope you enjoy this. I'm gonna keep on playing this game because it's really fun and I think um, that you're going to enjoy seeing what happens. So anyway, thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.